Jamie Pendleton and we are back with our show, Our Little Homestead. And part of being on a homestead is keeping an eye on your trees. That's right. Today we're going to be talking about trees and not just any trees. We're going to be talking about the ash tree. The ash tree is about to go extinct. People, I don't think, took this serious soon enough. And I think the... Um, I think the efforts and the conservation that it's going to take to try to fix this, I think we might even be too late. And I think there's some arborists out there that probably agree with me. We're talking about the ash tree. We're talking about damages done to the ash tree and what's causing the damages. And I believe this video should be shared around the globe. This is not just a United States problem. This is going to become a problem for Canada, Mexico, Hawaii, any, any place where you transfer plants from one nursery to another. This started in an uh, Asian country and like anything else, just like the Asian carps in the uh, Mississippi River. This is, you know, they added something to stop something else. Well, it's just a shame because now this came through nurseries from Asia from bringing in Asian trees into the United States. They weren't checked and, uh, and now we've got a real problem. The problem is called the Emerald Ash Borer. Ash for the tree, the collar is a metallic green, boar, and the boar is like a long, skinny, winged adult that bores into the tree. Now, the emerald ash boar has a unique boar in the tree. If you look under the bark or around the bark areas that, that's flaking off on your ash trees, you'll notice a D-shaped bored hole. Now, there's other ash borers, but these are the invasive ones that we're talking about that's spreading so quickly. You've got one, you've probably got thousands. We got thousands, you might as well consider your trees gone. I'll call your local arborist. When in doubt, call your local arborist. Can you prevent this? We're gonna talk all about this in just a moment. Now we're gonna start with the EAB. The EAB is the Emerald Ash Bore. That's what the EAB stands for. So when you hear someone talk about that, that's what they mean. Um, and again, like I said, the adults are a metallic green. That's very important to know. What do they do? They bore in the ash trees and they multiply very quickly and they cut that plumbing system off in the outer layer, it's called the Cambrian layer. They, 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 they cut that plumbing off for oxygen and water off to the tree. So when that happens, you'll know your ash tree has it when the top part is dead and it sends out little live shoots off the side. That's the tree trying to stay alive. Okay, it's trying to stay alive and trying to get some of that photosynthesis. It's trying, the tree's trying to adapt and trying to survive. So you'll notice little shoots coming off the side of your ash tree that wasn't there before. You'll notice D-shaped holes as if a woodpecker had been there. Um, you'll notice um, when you tear away the bark around those holes, you'll notice little S-shapes. They're like scars in the tree that are S-shapes then you know that you have the emerald um, ash borer and you'll know that your tree's infected. Basically, it's too late. Um, there is no, at this point, saving the tree. Um, they might have some updated fixes for it now since I've made this video, since I've studied it. We, this, is not, this is not an evolution, folks, where Darwin says something better is going to come along. This is a de-evolution. This is where when the ash borer gets done with the ash trees, the billions of ash trees, it's already kid killed up to 10 million or more uh, in the uh, eastern part of the United States. What do you think is going to happen when it runs out of ash trees to eat? It's got to survive somehow so the bug will adapt. If that's, if that's part of evolving that you want to talk about, it will adapt and it will actually start decaying and devastating another kind of tree. It could be the oak trees. It could be pine trees. It could be maple trees. It could just get into just any kind of tree that it likes then at that point. And then our forest. Our forest will be devastated once it gets into the forest. We won't be able to stop this. It's kind of like draw, drawing a fire line when we have the fires. These things are crossing the fire line. The number one way they're crossing the fire line, so to speak, you know, the ash borer line, is because people are cutting down their ash trees, not knowing that they have ash borers, and they're moving these limbs and stuff and these uh, logs for burning into campsites, state parks, national parks, um, neighbors' houses where they've got ash trees, where one to three beetles 
or ash borers are, um, you've got thousands now. And then that goes into millions. And then you've got not only one dead tree, but you're going to within two to three years of that tree dying. It takes two to three years for the tree to die. It also will have spread and jumped to the other ash trees on your property. And if you've taken any of the ash out or somebody brought them, obviously someone brought them to you where you wouldn't have them. So you ask yourself, where did they come from? And did I spread them or can I spread them? The answer is yes, you can. Just one or three will create thousands within two to three years. The tree will be dead within two to three years. And all the surrounding trees that they infect will be dead around them. And so the only way to really battle this is to stop burning ash trees, to, to put, taking them off the property. If you see that you have the ash borer, call your local horticulturist uh, college like Purdue University. Uh, call an arborist. Call your nursery. Ask them questions. I'll have an arborist or a horticulturalist, which is what my sister-in-law is, on board somewhere. All right? It's usually the person that has that owns the nursery or that works in the nursery. They also are a horticulturalist. But an arborist is the is the one person that you really want to contact. And if you find them there, you need to contact somebody so they can put it on the map that these have been found there. Because that's that's drawing the fire line. Like like let's say you're just south of Georgia and you find that you have the ash borer, that needs to be reported because then they need to search around the other areas and see if there's anything that's been found west of you. Because this line is moving from the east coast. Michigan, Pennsylvania's lost almost all their ash trees. Michigan, the southern part of Michigan, it's hit them. So now it's spreading this way. It's now into Indiana. All because people in Michigan and in, uh, were bringing, and Pennsylvania were bringing, and Ohio were bringing the firewood into the Indiana State Parks. Uh, when we were at Salamone Lake, we had to move our motor home. They hurried up that day and scheduled to cut down two ash trees that were next to our motor home. They didn't want to fall in the RV. And this is what really caught my attention. Every state park we went to in the RV, we, we hit all of them, but uh, four of them in Indiana in the last two years. There's 23 uh, or 26 of them. Um, we hit a lot of uh, lakes and things like that. Every one of them had a sign, no ash trees or you can't burn wood outside the home. You have to have a certain wood and it has to be checked at the gate. Um, just a lot of signs. And I thought, what's going on with this ash tree? And then we got to meet an arborist at the DNR and uh, they explained it to us. And I knew something about the ash borer, but I didn't know anything about the emerald ash borer. I had no idea that this Asian version had came across the United States and in just three to four years had almost completely wiped out our ash trees. And um, our other house where my dad died, I helped him plant our ash tree. And when I went by to look at it, the top was dead. It was putting out new shoots on the side. And I was like, oh my gosh, this tree's infected. They've got a mark to cut it down. I need to tell them where to take it because you just can't take it just anywhere or else where you take it, you're spreading it. They could be selling it for firewood, whoever takes it down. What do we do here? So I decided I've got almost 100,000 subscribers. I'm gonna start there. I'm going to start um, with prevention and trying to at least stop it and at least let people understand what they've got, what they're dealing with, and how to stop it, and at least how to slow it down. Um, we've got complete neighborhoods that were built in the 80s that all had ash trees in them in Ohio and Pennsylvania, and there's not a single tree left in that subdivision other than some pine trees. They planted all ash trees. In this neighborhood, the builder uh, put in all maple trees. Well, I put in three maples, but I put in, I put in five maples, excuse me, but I put in two oak trees, pine trees, birch trees, uh, plum trees, fruit trees. I put in other trees just in case I lost one type of tree. I would have plenty of other shade trees that were growing up at the same time. So I definitely suggest that you do that. We've covered um, how to prevent it. There are injections you can do, but there's, they're only 80% uh, effective. If you inject the tree and spray around the tree, what good is that? If you let's say you have um, four four hundred uh, emerald ash borers in the tree, and you spray it and you kill eighty percent, twenty percent still remaining, and that's enough to, to to go out and kill another thousand trees, and meaning that it will still kill your tree. You may slow it down a little bit, but it's still 
400's already done their damage paper. What it looks like is when you pair back the bark, you will get these little S shapes that, uh, I'm gonna draw some bark here. Okay. You will get these little S shapes. And these S shapes are in the Cambrian layer. That's the layer that brings the oxygen and water up to your tree. So when the top of the tree, you start seeing the dead foliage, but down around the trunk, it starts putting on new shoots. Well, those new shoots are the leaves coming out, trying, the tree trying to save itself. And then the adults will come out and you'll notice that they're eating around like you'll get a leaf here, you'll notice some chunks out of the leaves. Well, that's due to, uh, you'll notice that's another sign when they start eating the little chunks out of the leaves. So now I'm going to put some pictures in here. Okay, so that's a picture of an adult emerald ash borer eating the, the, the edge of the leaf of the ash tree. It's using the leaves for food, then it goes in and lays its eggs, bores inside, and then bores back out when it becomes an adult from the larva, and then it starts eating the leaves like caterpillars. It's a recycling thing, but they breed so fast, they're just not dying. And the uh, insecticides that they're using just aren't killing them. It's just they're moving from tree to tree too quickly and they're breeding too quickly. It's just not stopping. If this gets to our state forest, it's over. It's absolutely over. If it gets past Indiana and Illinois, it's over for the West Coast. We can at least try to help them out. So just be responsible is what I'm asking you. Be sure that you know what firewood you're bringing into your, into your house if you're buying firewood. Let the people know that it's an ash tree, that they're not supposed to be selling ash trees or selling them to other homes or parks for burning or campfire wood. Let, I mean, if you have to, call an arborist and let them know you know who's selling um, ash trees and ash trees that are infected for firewood. This is now illegal. You cannot do it. We've talked to you about how to prevent it on your own trees. You can spray them, you can inject them, drill, they drill holes in them like with a regular drill bit, and then they inject them with insecticide. Again, that may protect your tree, it may not. Um, if, if the ash borer's all around you, odds are you're just not going to save that tree. It's only 80% effective. And eventually it is coming your way. Um, so never take ash trees as firewood to a state park, forest, or any other location. Do not haul it from one place to the next. Burn it on site. If you have ash borers, burn it on site. And if you have an ash tree now, within the next two or three years, go ahead and get a new start on another tree. Plant a maple or plant an oak tree or plant something else that you like, a birch tree or something. Plant something there so when the ash tree goes, you will already have a fresh start of another tree. Because trust me, a bare late a laid bare neighborhood is just not pretty. It's just, it's just, it's just a horrible thing to see. Matter of fact, I'll put a picture of a devastated neighborhood here. I think this was Ohio or Pennsylvania. This neighborhood. All right, we're back. Isn't that sad to see? And people are like, they didn't plant other trees because they only had two or three years. They just weren't told this was coming. I'm telling you now, this is coming. Share this video. It's coming. This, is, this isn't, um, you know, I, I want to also say that this is, this is not a sign of evolution where something, Darwin says something better will come along. Just hold on. Something better will come along. No. This is where God says to be conservative. This is conservation. We've got to conserve and we got to be in a conservation mode. 
What happens when this happens and they decide to go live off on another tree? We're talking about a scorched earth scenario. We really are. You don't think so? But, you know, everybody says, oh, it took millions and millions of years to create the earth. But it's funny how a volcano or a tsunami can wipe it out in just a few seconds, a few minutes, a few hours. So um, something like this can take only two to three years and wipe out an entire tree. All right, so I hope that I'm making sense here. I really do. Um, like I, I want to go back and my came in. Darwin would say, let it be. A better species will come along. But God says, conserve our earth. Now you think about it. Conserving the earth certainly makes more sense. In the United States, we have over a billion ash trees. We've already lost over 10 million. Okay? So you can pretty much say 10 million to a billion. You're about to get wiped out on the, on the West Coast the same as on the East Coast. So let's keep that in mind. God said, conserve our earth. Let's be conservators. Let's conserve it. Let's find a way to put a fire break across here and get it stopped. And let's find a way. I'm not talking to scientists now. Let's find a way. Put our heads together. Let's find a way to stop this ash borer. Let's stop it. Without hurting anything else in the ecosystem of life, let's stop it. These emerald ash borers weren't meant to be in the United States. We brought them here through the nurseries even in the dirt that we use to, to plant it. So you just have to be careful what you're bringing into your yard. I can't stress that enough. Check those root balls, look through there, see if there's any grubs or anything. Treat for them in another part of your yard if you have to before you take it out of the pot. I mean, or just don't buy the tree if you think it's infested. Uh, buy healthy uh, trees and plants for your yard, all right? So conserve, nothing better is gonna come along when the ash tree's gone, it's gone. And where the ash tree, the billions of the billions of the ash tree emerald borers and the ash borers will go, they'll have to find another food source and then there'll be billions of them. So our next food source is formed, they'll just take anything and they'll wipe you out from the west coast backwards. So they'll move this way and then they'll come back that way and they'll deforest everything. So um, they will adapt. There is an evolution in the reality of, of the earth evolution in our reality of, 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 the, of the creation. The problem of it is it's not really an evolution, it's the changing of, of to make it decay faster. We're in a de-evolution, we're in a decay. Um, reality shows this and this is just another point of showing it. So when the ashes are gone, something else will be next. Anything, anything can go. So we've got to stop this. I can't begin to tell you how important that this is. They're not going to die off when they run out of food. There's too many of them. And it only takes one. If you've got one, you've probably got 50 to 100. And where 50 to 100 are, you're going to have thousands. Where thousands are, you've got them in other trees. So just by you having one infected tree, you could be infecting all the trees around you if you don't do something about your tree now. So try to save it if it hasn't been affected yet. That's my suggestion. Try to battle it if you can. If you can't, go ahead and plant another tree next to it or nearby. And, and I just can't stress enough, do not put an ash tree cut up on the back trailer of your wagon and haul it anywhere. Don't take it across state lines to, to, a, to a campsite or to your own personal log cabin site because you will still spread it. Even if you're thinking, well, I'm gonna burn it. No, it only takes one, two, or two or three to escape and they will escape to another live tree and they will travel. They can travel for days to get to what they want. That's how they crossed over from Ohio into Michigan where somebody took it up to a campsite. They've got it narrowed down to where it started and they know it was at a campsite. And then those same people that had the ash trees that were cutting it down selling it for firewood. That's why the Indiana State and regulations and all state regulations now in state parks and in other parks are you must have barkless camp firewood so they can look at it and make sure you don't have an ash tree and that way they can look at it and make sure that they don't have those little lines on it. So it may seem like harsh, so it may seem harsh at first, but if we're not harsh, we're not conserving. We're not caring. And caring means sometimes being, being upfront and honest about it. And uh, your feelings don't overrule facts. And your feelings do not overrule what needs to be done about a tree. If you love your ash tree, try to save it. Call a professional, call an arborist, call Purdue University if you live in Indiana or near that area. 
call your closest ag school or, um, um, or 4-H uh, representative. Call someone, a nursery. Get them out there to look at your ash tree, make sure it's still healthy, and see what you can do to prevent it. But if anybody tells you, and this is the truth, if anybody tells you they can save your ash tree, they're lying to you. And I think that's where we're going to end it. They would be absolutely lying to you. There's only an 80% chance of curing your tree. And as long as the other ash borers are around and killing the other trees, chances are they've already infected your tree too, or they will eventually. They're just, just 20%. That's all. I mean, just to go only 1%, less than 1% of them to get in your tree, to kill your tree. So odds are your tree is as good as gone. So I hope that this helps you. I hope this helps you become more of a conservative towards nature and uh, go out and find out what trees you do have in your yard or your neighborhood. Uh, check them out. You don't have to do any damages to check them out. You can just look at the tree. And I'll the bark of an ash tree has a very much of a look almost like an oak tree. It's very fine and defined. And then you'll also notice it's either really lush but like you said, it'll have those little D-shaped. If it's got an ash board, it'll have a round hole. If it's got uh, kind of like you get with a woodpecker. If it's D-shaped, then you know you have an emerald ash borer. And that's the ones we're battling right now. By the millions and maybe 100 million by now. I mean, we've lost 10 million trees already in the, in the eastern board uh, of the United States. If it crosses the fire line for the ash borer line, then... It's like an out of control fire. These things can fly, they breathe quickly, and they move quickly. Okay? We love you. You go with God today and you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend ahead. Okay? Blessings. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And maybe I'll try to do an interview on our local arborist so maybe he can tell us a little bit more about it. I'm pretty sure I covered most of it, but he might have something to say I missed. I don't know. But I know we don't want to lose these trees, and I think we're too late. I think we're going to lose the trees. I just think people are just not responsible enough, not responsible enough to know what trees they have in their yard. They don't care what fires they burn. You're always got the person that's at the campsite that will burn anything and sneak it in. They don't care because they don't understand the consequences. They don't understand what they just did may have lost every ash tree in that state park. And according to Salamone Lake, somebody brought the ash borer in on firewood, even though they're not supposed to. They snuck it in, and every one of those trees were getting cut down. Well, what fairness is it to have a beautiful state park, only to have someone else kill it? It doesn't make, just one family can kill an entire state park's full of trees. It just, it doesn't make any sense to me. An entire neighborhood goes down because someone selfish didn't handle their ash tree and their wood properly. It's just selfish to me. And it's like anything else, there's no reason not to have the knowledge. If I seem harsh, it's because it's here. It's in Indiana. And I'm scared we're going to lose all of our ash trees. And when we go, Illinois will be next. Illinois will be next, and so will Missouri. And it will travel on south down and through all those states. So if you have an ash tree and you're in those states, you better start making videos about how to stop the ash borer. Share this video. I can't begin to tell you how important it is, okay? Now coming up, uh, again, I've got our house plans are all ready to go. I told you I named our house plans the Stone Bridge. We're going to be talking about that. I am not giving up anything about the house plans. I'm hoping you can't even see it. <laughs> but Stone Bridge is the name of the subdivision. And the Stone Bridge is the name of the house. I do have a Stone Bridge that's going to go across from the house over to the barn because I have like a little dry creek area that we're going to make flow with a fountain that's going to have water in it. And it's beautiful. I have, I've got it drafted up. Uh, I'll, I'll show it to you um, uh, some other time, but I've got it all drafted up. And then the end of our road has a stone, a four arch stone bridge, and they're getting ready to rebuild it. The county is. So, um, and that runs over Sugar Creek. So that's at the end of our road, which is why we called it Stone Bridge. And then our bridge, plus we have a bridge at the other end that just got completely rebuilt. So there's stone bridges and bridges all around, going on all around. We've got Sugar Creek, but we're not in the flood zone. We've got hills, we've got trees, we have flow, I've got the septic all approved. Everything is ready to go, okay? Everything's ready to go. And I'm lining up all of my contractors and everybody that's going to be doing everything. I'm getting them on schedule to be the, I'm going to be the first we're going to be the first in the spring to get them in. 
So my basement guy's lined up, my well guy is lined up so they can work together to get the mechanicals in. Um, my son, our son, uh, Nathan, of course, is HVAC, and so we're going to probably pay him to come in and do our HVAC. He only does things for family, but we're not talking about a wedding shot here. We're talking about building a house and their line of work. And then our other son's going to come in, and he's going to help me custom built my hood vent, just like we did here. And then um, I'm looking at my custom stoves. So uh, I got a custom stove coming in. It may be, we're either going to do eight burner or a 10 burner gas top with wall ovens from the same manufacturing company um, that's in Indiana, or I might do a double, full double oven with 10 burners. So we're deciding on that, especially since in the new house, new kitchen, I'll have it set up. So other YouTubers can come in that are that are chefs that love to cook. They can come fly out, we'll fly them out, and they can, they'll have, a, we've got two really nice bedrooms in the library and another filming room upstairs. We have a bonus room above the garage for filming rooms. So they can still come stay, plus the basement for play. They can still come stay, bring the families, and still get lots of work done and learn how to homestead, how to can. I want, I want my students right there canning. If people want to learn how to homestead, they're going to come to this house and learn how to homestead. If people want to come to the house and learn about storm shelters, then that's what the barn and the silos are for. Um, if people want me to build their home, then of course the house itself is going to be my spec house. So all the companies that I own are still intact. People have asked me about that. Nope, I'm still intact. I still have Janie's Custom Homes. I still have Janie's Custom Homes and storm shelters, and that's still one and um, I still have my YouTube channel. I've made so many videos, okay, that they are coming. I've got a lot of canning videos that I just got to finish editing, shower videos for the babies that are coming. It's raining babies here. So I've had to be at the hospitals and different. So, um, so this is what we're doing. I just wanted to make two videos today. One was on the ash bore and one was on what we're doing. Um, all right, we love you. Go with God. Be sure and subscribe if you like what we're bringing to you. Be sure and subscribe. Over 700 videos of canning, food preservation, building. We got more building coming up. I'm really excited about this house plan, and um, there's a lot going on. So he's 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 studying for the he's studying for when I do marry the minutes in a few minutes. I'm gonna get him on that. Okay. All right. We love you. Go with God. Subscribe. And if not, we just love you anyway. Blessings.